Indian elections, do waves really matter? I have with me Praveen Chakravarti, the data man, who's been arguing that waves don't matter. He's looked at 40 years of uh, data to conclude that India is really an aggregation of many state elections happening at the same time and it's not one central election. Now, of course, uh, this can be argued against, uh, but you have to argue with something to uh, something substantive and uh, whereas Praveen seems to have all the data on his side. But let's discuss that in some more detail. Uh, we've also got Arun Giri who's been doing some, some of his own data analysis on uh, similar subjects, if not the same, joining us from Pune. Arun, thanks very much for joining us. So, uh, uh, Praveen, do you want to, any uh, alignments that you want to reveal before we start off? Because the obvious question is, you're, you're writing something which goes against the BJP and NDA's position in this uh, elections and uh, you may represent the other side. No, the, the, per, the, uh, p this piece particularly was mm. based on data and data mm. analysis. So mm. this is not, I'm no stooge for anyone, okay. neither is this uh, any official uh, party line or, or uh, in today's world of accusations of uh, uh, <laughs> intent of media, uh, let me make it very categorical that no one asked me to write this. Okay, fair enough. And no one paid you for it as well. No one paid me for so it. So you're not paid media. Okay, good. So let's start off. Why are we, are, why are we saying that uh, there, is a, there is no wave or why is, are we saying fundamentally that this is not a national election? So, um, Govind, I want to set the uh, context here and say, I am not saying whether there is a wave or no wave. Hmm. I am saying if there is a wave as defined by the national media hmm. and the narrative, hmm. the impact of this wave, hmm. so-called wave, hmm. on seats and votes hmm. is actually diminishing. Okay. That's all I am saying. I am not here to argue whether there is a wave or not a wave. Okay. Okay. And for the purposes of that, what did I do? I said, okay, let's talk about the big national narratives mm. and the waves, so-called mm. waves. Mm. And I looked at right from 1977. Mm. 1977 was the big, uh, if you recall, mm. uh, the anti-emergency wave, mm. the anti-emergency. Mm. And for a lot of my analysis, data analysis, and again, I want to say I do a lot of historical data analysis. The mm. reason I prefer to do data analysis is those are actual results. Mm. They are not opinions collected through surveys. Okay. These are actual results, mm. right? So, with, if, if I look at um, waves mm. from 1977 onwards, mm. uh, the anti-emergency wave, mm. the 1984 Indira Gandhi assassination sympathy wave, mm. the 1989 Beaufort mm. um, uh, corruption mm. anti-Congress yeah. wave, yeah. the 1999 Vajpayee wave, yeah. and the 2004 India shining wave. Right. These were waves, narratives as defined. Yeah. And I look at, and we, are, we have to remember, there are six states in the top six states in this country account for more Lok Sabha seats than the rest of the country combined. Right. The top 12 states account for 82% today, mm -hmm. and before delimitation in 2004, it accounted for nearly 90% of all seats. Right. If you, if so, you analyze these states, we, we are good enough. Right. So let's start with the anti-emergency wave. Uh, can we pick up uh, data on that and then look at it? Um, 1977, Pro Janta. So, what does this tell you or rather what are you telling us with this? Here's an astonishing observation, mm. 1977 anti-emergency wave, mm. anti-Congress, mm. right? Of the um, six largest states, mm. Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, mm. Tamil Nadu, mm. Karnataka of the 12, Karnataka mm. and Kerala, mm. five out of the 12 mm. voted for the Congress. Okay. They voted the Congress. Mm. And we're talking about the same 12 states. Okay. It's the same 12 states, mm. right? Mm. Same 12 states, five of them voted for the Congress. Mm -hmm. If, but how did they, how did uh, Janta come into power? Mm. There was of course a large um, uh, seat um, in, the, in the Hindi heartland, mm. which was, you know, UP, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, mm. before the division into smaller states, as well as through alliances. Mm. And I think that's, that's important. So mm -hmm. it started right there. Then if you actually look at data from moving on to 1984, mm. the Indira Gandhi assassination, if, you say, if, I, if I look at 1977, of these 12 mm. uh, states, the wave beneficiary, which is mm. the Janata Party, mm. won only 57% of the seats, 50% mm. of the states, mm. and for, only 43% of the votes. Okay. So with just 43% votes, uh, it was considered a wave or they were considered beneficiaries of a wave? They were, I mean, well, the wave narrative came before hmm. and then the results is right. sh show, hmm. uh, you know, if it is a wave really, I mean, it should at least help you win 50% of the states. Right. So b b before we come back to 1984, in some ways you're saying that there's never been a wave in India. 
Again, it's relative. Yeah. If, if 40 percent vote share, some would argue, is a very sig significant vote share, then yes, maybe it qualifies for a wave. At least mathematically, the way mm. I look at it mm. is I look at it as seats. Mm. I say it should at least get you 50 percent of seats that you've mm. contested. Mm. And for the, in, by that definition, it qualifies. It gave them 57 percent of seats. Mm. But that definition, it qualifies. Okay. Right. So let's talk about 1984 because here you are actually showing the flip that uh, you know in the BJP Congress kind of equation. Yes. Um, in 1984, the Indira Gandhi assassination um, sympathy wave, mm. um, out of the 12, Andhra Pradesh, mm. which had 42, state, uh, 42 seats, voted for a regional party called the Telugu Desam. Mm. The mm. Congress in mm. Tamil Nadu won with an alliance with AIADMK. Mm. If there was indeed really a sympathy wave that could have benefited them, was mm. there a need for an alliance? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So 41 and 40, right? I mean, all, all 40 seats in Tamil Nadu yeah. in 1984. Okay? Right. So, so, but having said that, I think the last example of a wave translating mm. into meaningful seat share and vote share mm. is only in 1984. Mm -hmm. That was Indira Gandhi's. 78% mm. of the seats mm. went to the beneficiary, the mm. wave beneficiary. Mm. And 49% of mm. the votes mm. went to the wave beneficiary. Okay. Since then, it's been dramatically down, mm. and now we are looking at 24% mm. of votes and 26% of seats mm. to the beneficiary if we consider the 2004 India Shining Wave. Okay. So now, why is this diminishing? I mean, what's the, I mean, I'm not, not, we'll come to the statistical part later, but what's the larger picture? It is actually not um, a big, not, not a big surprise if mm. you think about it, because mm. Um, you know, it tests the very federalism of, of uh, the country mm. and anyone that grasps the sheer diversity of this country will mm. not find it actually surprising. Mm. West Bengal, for example, it's a large state mm. with 42 seats. Mm. West Bengal has never ever elected mm. the supposed wave beneficiary mm. in its history. Mm. Okay. It's always, so elections have been a lot more local and that's why I say the data clearly shows mm. that states vote almost in some of the states mm. west bengal andhra pradesh tamil nadu karnataka kerala vote as independent nations in themselves in mm. some sense mm. and it's in sometimes in in some sense it's not surprising if you look at it today the bulk of the andhra vote is going to be decided on the telangana issue mm. yeah not whether there was a 2g scam or whether mm. there is a modi way mm. and that's the point and it's only getting exacerbated with mm. every election it's very logical for a very diverse and large but have like more us. states Join this trend, right? So you talk West Bengal, uh, Andhra, Karnataka, Kerala. Yeah, you said, right? Yes. So have others in uh, Tamil Nadu, of course. Tamil Nadu. And, yeah. and have other states joined this trend, or is this this has been a traditional block of independently voting states? Orissa has joined the trend. Okay. Orissa has certainly joined the trend. Orissa, where with Naveen Patnaik there, mm. um, c clearly votes mm. on it's a referendum on Naveen Patnaik. Mm. That be it for the center or be it for the state. Okay. So Orissa has joined that trend. You can see Bihar mm. joining the trend. You can see UP getting into a four-party uh, race, genuine four-cornered race, mm. rather than the the two-cornered national party race. Okay. The rise of regional parties is nothing but a reflection of the local demands and the reflection of the fact that people vote locally. Mm. People vote according to local issues. Regional parties feel that they are much better equipped to cater to these local issues. And that's why the rise of regional parties. Right. So now comes the, uh, we come to the present. Right? Why should not this be different, right? I mean, is, is it, I mean, fundamentally things have changed. We are coming on the heels of low economic growth. There is frustration around the country, not just in some uh, parts of the country. There is a sense that uh, uh, a BJP or a Modi, and you know, after all, we are, this election is being fought on, the, on a single, individual plank as opposed to let's say the party plank so why may why why might not all these factors go on to influence a wave or create a wave um, one author that i admire the most uh, nasim talib hmm. you know he said uh, and i'm 41 years old he said uh, praveen just because you've lived for 41 years doesn't mean you won't die tomorrow hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay uh, very similarly, as a historical data analyst, mm. um, I cannot refute the argument that tomorrow could be different. Mm. This time it can be different. Mm. And all of those, mm. right? What I say is historical data gives you certain trends. Mm. 
and in large countries, these mm. trends don't change dramatically. Mm. I think the, the best example for that I have is this, uh, this notion that India has suddenly become young as a country, at least when it comes to elections. Mm. No, we never became young or old dramatically. Mm. We age in a certain progressive manner. Mm. Uh, in the absence of external shocks, mm. which was the when last time Rajiv Gandhi lowered the voting age from 21 to 18, then he had a whole bunch of new votes. Mm. Otherwise, we just age. So I can absolutely predict what the first time voters as a percentage of overall voters will be for the 2019 elections yeah. in the absence of external shocks. Yeah. That's what historical data gives us. Okay. Gives us certain trends. To the argument that this time is different, mm. it's a narrative, it's an opinion, and I'm not here to opine. <laughs> um, and yes, absolutely anything. And that's the whole black swan argument. Mm. You know, things can happen dramatically. If mm. it does, all I'm saying is, for this to fructify, I'm presenting the enormity of the challenge. Mm. You have to buck a 40-year trend. Right. Okay, so now let's look at what's been happening in these uh, four or five states specifically. What can we draw from recent events? For instance, elections happened in Karnataka, uh, things got reversed, right? So uh, the BJP went out, Congress came in, perhaps the only state where it happened, uh, not perhaps, it's the only state where it happened. Now, uh, what other uh, sort of uh, occurrences have we seen in some of these states which could give us a sense on how things could go now? So states vote locally. That's exactly mm. why we saw Karnataka. I mean, they've always gone back and forth. Mm. And they, this time, they voted for the Congress. And, you know, based on, and I don't read much of the opinion surveys, but people seem to think that Congress could still win Karnataka this time. But, you know, on the point of those four assembly um, um, elections of five, mm. which is Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Rajasthan, um, Chhattisgarh, and Delhi, mm. let me point out, these five have 100 seats mm. together mm. in the Lok Sabha. Mm. Okay. 2004, the NDA mm. won 75 out of the 100 mm. from these states. Mm. They didn't form the government in the center. Mm. 2009, mm. the NDA won 49. Mm. The UPA won 46. Mm. And um, uh, five were won by others. Mm. And the NDA didn't form the government in the center. Right. So, I mean, let me ask you, and uh, we've got Arun also uh, uh, standing by. Uh, you know, UP Bihar, right? I mean, uh, these contribute to over 100 seats. You're saying that essentially these states form like the rest of the country uh, or rather vote with the rest of the country or rather constitute what is the rest of the country as, and, and uh, almost like the rest of India cricket team. Correct. And, and whereas the others are really voting independently. I mean, if I were to... See, they define the narrative. It's almost like how Delhi somehow suddenly some seem to define the narrative, and that's largely because of your ex profession, mm. um, which is uh, you know television media is very um, uh, uh, um, uh, Delhi focused. Uh -huh. um, uh, you know, I mean, the fascinating Delhi has seven seats, but mm. it gets so much attention mm. about who wins Delhi and who doesn't, and mm. so it's. I'm saying the definition of a national wave is wrong. Mm. Okay. The that's that's where we have a starting point. Starting point. Okay. Uh, Arun Giri joins us. Arun, uh, you've been hearing some of this, I presume. Do you have a view on uh, or a question on what constitutes a national wave? Yeah, actually, you know, I wrote a thesis uh, when I was in journalism college 10 years back, studying all the elections right from 52 onwards. And I've been a very keen uh, election junkie. So, I'm, uh, you know, Praveen has brought out a very important point. But this trend, uh, uh, I would partially agree with him, not entirely, for a simple reason that 2004 was an absolute state-by-state -state aggregation. There was no national anti-NDA wave in 2004. Vajpayee lost, NDA lost because of two states primarily, Andhra and Kanad. From 66, they came down to, from around 60 seats out of 72, 42 plus uh, 40, 82, out of 60, they came to 6. So if, if they had done even 30, 35 seats better, they would have been the biggest player even in 2004. So that's one point that, that yes, maybe not. But look at the campaign that uh, Mr. Modi has been running this election. And I spoke to one of the senior most BJP strategists, uh, you know, uh, working in the war room. Point. He said, this was in September, if I recollect correctly, he said, if we get down to local candidates in this election, the election is lost. So you're contesting the election on the name of one man. I've been I've been in Bangalore for the last four five days, uh, and we spoke to hundreds of people. Pravin, just picking up on what Arun sure. says. Yeah. No, but you know so that's like I said. I always get this. This is what I get, which is I've spoken with this. I've talked to these many voters. I've visited this rally, and I've done this. I've watched this campaign. Yeah. Those are all opinions. Yeah. 
what and I had. So were you. You were you were touring as well in the last uh, few correct. Days, yeah. And I refused to um, <laughs> get any of that. Let any of that influence hmm. what data has shown. Okay. Right. And to that point in 2004, it's wrong. It's actually Tamil Nadu that lost uh, hmm. uh, Vajpayee. Hmm. It was a 39, 40, zero route. Hmm. 40, zero route because hmm. they chose the wrong partner. Okay. So it um, and that's why if you look at my other piece, hmm. it talks about what is the mathematics of the Modi wave. Hmm. It was essentially this was the choice that they had. Hmm. Can we drive a one man? Can we try and see if we can take that gamble and go with a one man can set a national trend and a national wave hmm. and forget the alliances and state wise and can we go is or so should we actually go for alliances? Uh, yeah. That's the bet. Okay. Clearly the BJP has chosen the former. Hmm. If it pays off, hmm. it's but the forty year trend. Okay. Hats off. Hmm. But, but but the to the other question that are you seeing the signs if again going by data, the recent elections, Karnataka being one, of the trend being bucked? No. I'm asking the question again in some ways. Not at all. Know, not yeah. at all. In fact, my piece on um, you know the mathematics of the Modi wave starts with a comment by Mr. Modi himself, which is suddenly um, recently he started saying 2004 14 polls will be about chemistry and not mathematics, which hmm. means alliances matter more. Hmm. And you could see why on the day when the polling starts, they announce an um, alliance with Telugu Desam. Hmm. Yeah. I think they've come to realize the importance of alliances. Hmm. I think they've come to realize that this is important. Right. No, I mean, it's not that they didn't know it, right? I mean, or you're saying that really the their original bet of the one-man uh, nationwide sweep may not pan out the way they thought it would pan out. Maybe they think now it's probably too risky. Yeah. Probably too risky. Because that was a clear trade-off. I hmm. mean, when senior leaders within the BJP said hmm. that we may antagonize allies, hmm. so maybe we should stay off from you know, announcing a prime ministerial candidate mm -hmm. versus can the prime ministerial candidate charge up the carriers, mm. ca charge up the voters and get all by himself or herself. Okay. So let's come to the uh, one of the sort of penultimate, I guess, points here. Now, when we look at these four or five states which are voting in some ways independently or at least have voted somewhat independently, what are the voters they're looking for and what are they getting when they vote differently? And, and why are they in some ways not uh, falling in line with the national narrative or the national uh, dream as it were? Um, you know, and I know this is controversial, but you know, 100 years ago, Churchill said India is a geographical concept. Hmm. Uh, I mean, the sheer diversity of the country, it's just, all you have to do is just to go around, tour and see hmm. whether um, either, uh, you know, the economy or the rape incident in Delhi is really a national issue, hmm. as a lot of uh, television anchors would want us to believe. Hmm. Um, okay. And it's not. Hmm. And it's not. And it's very. Um, and it's very natural. It's very, very natural. See, given that we just had the World Cup, uh, uh, cricket World Cup yesterday, hmm. there was a time when Kapil Dev won matches for India hmm. single-handedly. Hmm. Yesterday, Virat Kohli couldn't do it single-handedly. Hmm. Yeah. And that's really After the analogy. After seemingly demonstrating that he would like, he was Absolutely. likely to do it in the semi-finals. And with all the capabilities and the prowess and the the the, yeah. the mental toughness that he had. Hmm. Still couldn't do it. He still needed that Yuvraj to hmm. give him a, uh, give him the strike. He still needed Rane to take that catch on the outfield. Hmm. Um, and so what's the point? So the point is, you need you need others. You need okay. alliances. Okay. You, it's very clear that that's what data shows. Hmm. And if anything, that trend is only exacerbating. Okay. So uh, we're we're starting elections uh, now. I mean, today to be more specific. What is your sense? Which how are things looking? Um, as a pure, again, as a data, um, electoral data analyst, I'm very curious to see if uh, a trend would be bucked or not, mm. really. And, that, and, and that's why it's a fascinating election for me, because it's the first time this has been such a big bet mm. on, on this. Mm. So um, I, don't like, I don't believe in any of these opinion polls and surveys, simply because, and I'm not saying they are, their intent is wrong, simply because vote share to seat share in a complex and a large country like India mm is extremely complex. Okay. It's, it's almost impossible to, to define that math. Right. So, Arun Giri is back. Arun, uh, sorry, you got cut off because of a bad line. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I, was, I don't know where uh, I got cut off. Uh, but Praveen, I, I partially agree with Praveen because 2004 elections, clearly uh, NDA lost because of two states. None to do with anything nationally. Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, they came down from 60 to 6. Uh, and uh, Praveen has made a very good point about alliances. Absolutely. In 2004, 
DMK struck a rainbow, rainbow coalition contesting the lowest number of seats in its electoral history in Tamil Nadu and it swept all the 40 seats, the alliance. So that makes a huge difference. If one state had voted the other way, uh, possibly uh, in, in 2004, the results would have been different. As for this election, uh, I think the most fascinating part is going to be the nationalization of this election uh, by BJP. So much so, you talk to the Kada here where I'm sitting in Pune, you talk to Bangalore where I was there for four or five days. The, for the BJP supporters, for the BJP voters, the, the local candidate has been rendered irrelevant. And and, and that is something, that if, if this actually works, then uh, this is this, this is going to be a, a big change. Even even when, during Vajpayee, you know, the, the, the folklore yeah. in 2004 was for all the weak BJP candidates, the local candidate majboori hai, Vajpayee zaruri hai. Here the local candidate has, been become, has become irrelevant. It's Modi, Modi and only Modi. And as for the uh, for where we stand today, as per my calculation, if BJP wins, 58 seats, around 58 plus minus 2, 3 in UP and BR taken together, they will touch 200. Okay, Arun, that's a, a, a forward prediction which uh, Praveen uh, does not usually get into, and at least here. He says that he's only going to stick to the data. So let's take a question that uh, Anusha has sent in. She says, do you think our young voters will follow caste-based political beliefs of the parties they vote? Praveen? Um, uh, so young, again, young, young voters, uh, you know, I think there is there are young voters in, there are Tamil young voters, there are Bengali young voters, there are UP young voters. Okay. And it's a, again, I do not buy into this national Indian youth uh, young voters. Mm. S trends are defined by that. Mm -hmm. Within the when same When it comes state, to political choices, there may sure. be other things that they may agree on. Absolutely. Right? Bollywood stars, music. Huh? Absolutely, so yeah. absolutely. And you know, people of uh, even Bollywood stars, I'm not okay. sure after having taught Tamil Nadu. I think Rajini okay. Khan still reigns sure, supreme so, okay. there. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, think entertainment, music, and the choice. I think of really it. cricket's really the only unifying only. thing at this okay. point in time. Okay. Um, but 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 the point is, within the state, hmm. uh, do youth vote more for you know um, on uh, less on identity and more on this? There is no clear data for that. Okay. Data doesn't show. In fact, I'm working on a piece, next piece, mm. which is about do people vote for a candidate or a party? Mm -hmm. And um, so I mean, that it's like the almost like a holy grail question. It is. It is a very <laughs> and and um, as always, the answer is always somewhere in the middle. Mm. But how much of it is in the middle? And I think my please initial analysis has some very startling revelations there. Okay. Good. So, Praveen, uh, uh, we are uh, running out of time or we have almost run out of time. Arun, do you have a last word to get in before we close? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, as I said that uh, uh, state by state aggregation is the larger point Praveen has made. Uh, to a large extent, I agree. Uh, but I don't think that in, in that people can't make that distinction. One small example I'll give, 1999 Maharashtra, Lok Sabha and Assembly went together. Both Lok Sabha and Assembly went together. I don't know for I think possibly for the first time in in Maharashtra's history, NDA won 28 out of 48 seats uh, in the Lok Sabha elections. In the uh, Assembly, uh, NDA lost the power. Congress and CP contesting differently did not contest together. Contested against each other and won 10 seats more than BJP Shiv Sena in the Assembly. People voted radically differently. One third of the voters in my own constituency of Shivaji Nagar in Pune who voted for uh, in in lok sabha for the bjp did not vote for shiv sena in the in the assembly in the assembly in the same segment uh, i think the national factor is there in a okay. national election how much it, it, yes it is an aggregation over the last 10 15 years it has moved in that way but you cannot you cannot uh, forget the national factor the test case here will be telangana voters are smartly separating the two and taking i mean it's very clear if there is an mns hmm in the assembly ballot, and there's no MNS in the national ballot, I mean, I'm just giving that as an example, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that's the case, hmm. then automatically the, the results will be different. Okay. Because we have to remember, splitting a vote is as important as getting a vote in our elections. Got it. Right, Praveen, so we've run out of time. Thanks, Arun. We are going to circle back on this as we continue our uh, discussions with our data man here, Praveen Chakravarti, also uh, founding trustee of India Spend, which has been hosting some of these pieces. And you can visit www.indiaspend.com to read some of his pieces. Thanks very much, and we're going to be back soon.